Well, hello everybody and welcome back into the kitchen. I know it's been forever since I posted anything here and it's going to be interesting with the new camera on its tripod and stuff because I'm used to like manhandling it and moving it around. But anyway, I took the day off today because I got to go off to the uh, mechanic later on. So I thought this morning I would make a monster batch of mead and I am bringing you guys along, well, A, to show you that the channel is still alive. I haven't completely forgotten about it and B because this is easily the largest batch I have made intentionally. I am using more honey than I have previously and I'm throwing in a, a I think it's a Saskatoon berry syrup for a flavoring so it's it's gonna be kind of interesting to see what the end result of this is. I am using two yeast packets today because they're a little on the older side so I'm kind of questioning their viability and I really want to make sure that this sucker is done before Leaf Erickson Day October 9th for those of you who don't know because it seems like it'd be a really good night to sit around, have a campfire, drink some mead, you know. So, let's get started um, throwing this together. Hopefully I can find some decent tripod angles and yeah, let's make some mead. So for those of you who may be watching this as a, an exploration kind of video, trying to figure out how to make mead, there are a couple of things that you should know. First off, this is an entertainment channel, not an educational channel, so you will probably need to watch other videos. And second off, that said, even though I bumbled my way through things, it's really, really easy. All you really need is uh, some water, which we're representing with this pot here, because we're going to be using it with a lot of water in a couple of minutes. Oh, kick the tripod. Some honey. Our honey comes from a wonderful gentleman here in town. So this is all natural, unfiltered, unpasteurized. This is beautiful, about as uh, fresh from the hive as you can get it. Honey, we've got full gallon here because I want to make this really potent and kind of sweet and then you're gonna want a yeast I'm using I believe that's a champagne yeast but there are lots of options out there so before you be sure you check into those too and um, like I say when you're watching other videos on how to make mead be sure to jot down what they use as a yeast because you never know what your local market is gonna have so you're gonna want to have options when you go looking all right so yeah, there's really not a lot to this. And of course the fridge kicks in when I'm ready to make a clip. But it's also worth noting for uh, first timers that you can never really use too much sanitizer. Everything you see in here has been sanitized and um, will be good to go. I've had a couple of incidents, so yeah, I thought it was worth mentioning. Like I said, just in case you're a first timer. So one of the first things I'm gonna get doing here is I'm gonna start warming up some water in this big old stock pot. Is a terrible sound do, 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 do. because I have a lot of honey that I need to get to a more liquid state so I'm just gonna uh, kind of melt it down in there I want to be really careful not to get this too hot though because then I destroyed the benefits of the uh, unpasteurized honey basically I'm just looking to bring this to a liquid state so that I'll be able to pour it back into uh, well the mead monster so yes I'm gonna start this uh, on a scale of 1 to 9, apparently my stove doesn't go to 10, we're putting this on about a 3 just to get it going. And I'm going to get a little bit of warm water out of this to start activating my yeast on the early side. But there's not really much point in watching this, so we'll get back in a couple of minutes. So we have gotten some of this glorious honey from Peter before. And I have to say, he is one of my local uh, heroes. This guy is just doing so many awesome permaculture type things. Keeps telling me that he's going to start a YouTube channel, and I really hope he does, because I'd like to have access to that information if we eventually leave town. But just glorious honey. This is the first time I've gotten one of his one gallons. Uh, I don't know what honey is worth where you live, but here we pay 35 bucks for this, and that is a screaming deal. So really excited to give this entire bucket a try and uh, well of course when I'm done with it it'll probably end up with a plant in it downstairs won't it so food safe bucket free with purchase you gotta like that but look at that beautiful honey oh almost makes a fellow want to have some toast but at the same time I want to get all of this into today's batch of meat so right on just thought we'd take a look at that before we get too much further into the process. So now that we've gotten our stock pot of water to slightly above room temperature, 
just going to pour a little bit into this, like I said, sanitized jar. And we're going to follow it with our yeast. Use our sanitized iced teaspoon. I do love those iced teaspoons from Grammy. And uh, mix that all up and let it get activated, so called. And then basically it just sits to the side. So, do, do, do. Not exactly um, thrilling or high skill stuff here. Just going to sprinkle that in. It is kind of fun to watch it sink to the bottom. This water probably could have been a little bit warmer when I started this process. But I'm not too terribly worried about it. I think the first time I did this I dumped it right into cold water. First or second time. I know I have given it a try. So it will eventually warm up in there while we're getting everything else done. Just give it a quick stir. Not the best sound on the camera, I'm sure. So I'll do the rest of that off camera. And we're still waiting on our batch of water to get warm enough to start melting honey here. So, all right. So the water's getting a little bit warmer now. It's still not um, even close to really hot, but I don't want to cook this honey. I just need it in a slightly more liquid state so that I can get it into my jug. And you can tell, you know, looking at that in there, it's not exactly quick melting it off the spoon. So, this is going to take a little while to get all of this honey into here. But you know what? Good things are worth waiting for. And I think I can probably bear to let this get a little bit warmer along our journey today as well. So, yes. I will get doing that. And uh, we'll get back to you in a minute. You know how this goes. YouTube and stuff. So after about five minutes of scooping honey, here we are, pretty much empty. Might be a little bit for some toast in there. Cut it pretty close with this particular stock pot. I think I might use the larger one next time I do this. But we have a gallon in there. And now it's just a matter of letting this slowly warm up and stirring it till it kind of all becomes a singular liquid. Very close to like a simple syrup that you'd make out of sugar, except we're using honey. So, I will do that and uh, prep things for the next stage. I got some Saskatoon berry syrup. I'll show you that really quick while we're here. This is from, uh, no surprise I'm sure, a little company in Saskatchewan. So, yes. No artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. Hopefully this won't mess with everything too bad should give me a little tiny hint of Saskatoon berry considering we're looking at a four to five gallon brew here shouldn't be too overpowering and even if it is I like Saskatoon berries so not really a problem this isn't taking too long starting to get nicely melted down so just push that a little bit further and we'll be good to go. So I've got my uh, water jug here, well, my mead monster really, sitting up on one of our kitchen chairs. It's not the most attractive thing in the world, but it gets the job done, you know? Typical bear stuff. So I'm gonna add to our main mix that Saskatoon berry syrup so that it gets mixed in with everything else that goes in there. Oh, that's got some thick sort of goodness to it. That's a good size. I'll just let that sit for a minute. Do, do, do. And then in the name of waste not, want not, I've just filled that up again with some of our honey water. Try and get the last of that syrup out of there. Or at least a little bit more. And uh, starts getting some of our honey in there too, doesn't it? Now, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm gonna turn the heat off here on the stove. And I've got my handy little stainless steel jug and you know what here I'll grab the honey pot so I don't drip all over the kitchen floor it's a pro tip guys you know keep it clean if you want to be allowed to play in the kitchen keep it clean so 
I am just going to slowly transfer most of the honey water into our jug here. And then again, in the name of waste not want not, I'm just going to top it up with some more of our fresh water. Try and extract, extract, I should say, the last of the honey out of my stock pot. Because the goal is to get as much of it in here as I can. So I'll probably even rinse out this uh, pail that the honey came in. Actually, I'll do that right now. Some of our warm water, try and get a little bit more of that sweet, sweet nectar out. Anyway, we'll get back once I'm filling this puppy up. Okay, so just about to finish topping this up. So I'm gonna add in our hopefully well-activated yeast. Just kind of pour that in rather unceremoniously. In she goes. Again, I'm gonna try and grab the last of that with a little bit of our, hardly any honey left in this water really, but still a little, so still honey water. All right, and then back to the mini jug to top, whoops, kick the stand again. And then back to the mini jug, as I was saying, to finish topping this up. And then basically, it just needs to cap and we're done. So, I'll see you in a minute. Now, I kind of want to make sure everything is well combined, so I'm just going to take the original cap that came with this bottle. I'll show you something fun about those in a second. And, uh, give it one heck of a good shake. Shake them, not shake Yes. It's been both, sorry, Bond. But okay, um, right on. So I didn't leave myself quite as much headroom in my jug as I was uh, initially planning. Probably not a great surprise. Anyway, the cool thing about these water tower jugs is they've got that little pop-out bit in the center. Now, hopefully my camera is focusing on that appropriately. But I've discovered that you can pop that out completely and in its place, you can fit one of these standard airlock centers. And it fits in there nice and snug like a bung you'd get from the homebrew store. So, we'll put our sanitized cap and our sanitized airlock on there. Fill that up to about uh, an inch or so. Along the lines of playing it safe, I like to fill this up with a little bit of sani solution. So far, that really hasn't been a problem for me. Let me just take our top there, pop it on. We still got plenty of room. As the gases build up in here, that's gonna raise our centerpiece. The air will escape out the bottom, bubble it up. It's kind of neat, fun to watch if you haven't seen it before. Clamp our little lid on there. And then this is ready to go. I've got a little tote that I'm gonna put this in just in case it overflows, because those of you who've watched my channel and my mead making before, you know this has happened I tried doing some uh, Saskatoon berry well mixed berry mead really and yeah like got explosive that's when we upgraded from the one gallon to the five gallon 18.9 liters or whatever this claims to be anyway that is a lot of mead for let's see ten dollars gets us the water bottle and the fill here so ten and thirty five for the honey we're looking at forty five dollars and I don't know two packets of yeast maybe another 250 we'll call it five at tops so we're gonna get roughly four and a half gallons of mead out of this for a $50 investment which it seems to me is a pretty good deal because around here that's 226 ounces and uh, this is gonna be a whole lot more than that all right into the tote you go my friend so yeah this uh, big old tote that I've got seems to me makes a really good mead brewing station because if it bubbles out it's just all going to be caught by this anyway and come this winter i'm going to start filling this up about halfway with water i've got a couple of fish tank heaters so i'm going to throw a smaller one in there and we're going to try and keep this at a very consistent 70 degrees or uh, 75 degrees got to research it and find out what it should actually be at but uh, yeah, hopefully this winter's mead is going to be in a nice warmed water bath and with luck that will help us get some, some very nice results indeed. So here we have Saskatoon berry syrup, a whole lot of honey, some water, 
some activated champagne yeast, mix it all together, put it in a jug, set it aside, and the meat is on its way. Like I said, if you're a first time uh, brewer, definitely check out some other videos. There are lots of great ones out there. Um, but you might have learned something from this. Hopefully you've at least enjoyed your time. Those of you who are regular viewers of the channel, we will check back on this. Oh, I'm guessing in a couple of months. That's an awful lot of honey. It's going to need some serious time. Unless, of course, there's an accident, in which case we'll check back on it then. So there you go. It's a little look at the meat I'm making today. Uh, doing something a little fun with my morning off because I can. I have the time. So as I said, mentioned earlier, I hope you enjoyed the clip. Thank you for joining me here in the kitchen. And yeah, if you did find yourself entertained or even... <laughs> somewhat educated why not share the channel with a few friends share the video i don't know check through the channel there's bound to be something else on here that will entertain or educate you like i said not generally an educational channel though so keep that in mind as you search uh i guess that is about it like i said in case of an accident we'll check back on it then otherwise we'll check back on this in a couple of months when it's getting closer to or hopefully ready to test Thanks for joining me, everybody, and have yourselves a fantastic day.